Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a brief video, I'll try and be brief, um, to let you know the Break Narcissistic Possession course is now out. And I've been asked what's the difference between this and the Unplug from the Matrix course. So Unplug from the Matrix course, quite an ambitious course, it took me the longest I ever spent developing a course. It was over a year to develop it and it was the question answered if you want to truly break free from uh, a narcissistically abusive relationship, never get into another one again, how would you do it? That's the course. But it's it's been easy for some people and, and harder for others. I would expect it to be fairly demanding. The Break Narcissistic Possession course is based on two different formats. Number one, it's easier. I know that people like to listen so there are written exercises with the Break Narcissistic Possession course, but it's predominantly, and there are videos that explain things to you, but it's predominantly audio based. So you can listen to it, you can do the visualizations, and you will make progress in that way. I know that people like that. Everybody's stressed out. People have not that much time. And sometimes you just don't have, you don't have the time, and you don't have the energy left uh, to engage in a, in a demanding course. So you can listen to this one. So that's the first major difference. It's easier, it's, it is exercises, it is videos, but it's predominantly audio based, which means you can download the audios and listen to them at your leisure and you will make progress. Please do the written exercises as well, of course. It also answers a different question. One of the questions that I've received the most over the years, well, there's a, series, there's a cluster of questions and the answer is, you must reduce the narcissist's significance in your life. The questions are, what if it's a mother or father I can't get away from? What if it's a family member I can't get away from? What if I'm sharing custody with a narcissist? What if I'm in a court battle with the narcissist in question? What if I'm just in a situation where I can't really use gray rock and I can't, I can diminish the contact, but I can't stop it. Basically, I have to keep interacting with them at least for the next year, two years, or a designated period of time. And I get asked that all the time. So this is to significantly decrease the significance and the possessive control the narcissistic person has in your life so that you can deal with them. Why is this so important? Ooh. We've discussed on the channel uh, numerous times over the years the power of trauma bonding. We've discussed on the channel uh, now over the years the power of being immersed inside of the narcissist's fancy, fantasy version of themselves. If you get into a narcissistic relationship, though you don't consciously consent to it, you are coerced into sort of making a deal with the devil, which is you will be given access to a narcissistic fantasy version of reality and in exchange, you forego your critical thinking, your capacity to reason, your capacity to say no, and your capacity to reason in a normal way. You essentially submit to this game. The game has rules. Just because it's a game doesn't mean it's not serious and doesn't mean it has serious, if not potentially life-threatening consequences. But it is a game to the extent it's not real. It's a fantasy that two adults, or, or an adult and a child, um, a child obviously cannot consent at all. Consent for an adult is harder because you will be deceived as to what the intention of the game is and the point of the game is, and you're, you're effectively coerced into it. And then you engage in a narcissistic contract and you play that fantasy role along with them. The trauma bonding effect means that that person is going to be inflicting so much pain and so much confusion in your life and leaving you with so many unanswered questions, which is the intrigue issue. So this course specifically looks at the element of intrigue. Why does the narcissistically abusive relationship turn us all into detective, turn us all into screenshotters of WhatsApp messages and recorders of conversations and keepers of dates because you're being driven mad, essentially. Or 
the process of engaging in this narcissistically abusive relationship game is maddening and depends on maddening communication. All of the coordinates for reality are warped and your capacity to detect truth from fiction and fantasy from reality is by necessity damaged and diminished within the narcissistically abusive relationship. So this course is taking all of that, all of the intrigue, all of the questions, all of the, oh, this like, um, it's a cognitive dissonance which manifests commonly as like a somatically felt stress in the body where your different ego interjects are, are fighting for control, or your ego interjects end up fighting with the narcissist superego interjects for control. It's enormously stressful, it's very exhausting, but what it means is if the narcissist sends you a text, if the narcissist calls you or you see them, you are hyper activated. You become hyper vigilant. You are in a state of hyper arousal. And all you're doing over time, you imagine a timeline, they contact you, you go into hyper arousal. They contact you, you go into hyper arousal. Stimulus, response, stimulus, response, stimulus, response. Contact, hyper arousal, contact, hyper arousal. Contact is adrenaline, contact is, is, is stress, is cortisol. If you're relieved of the torture for a minute or given a crumb, then you get dopamine and serotonin from that. But who is doing all this across a timeline? It's one person leaving these traumatizing markers in the central nervous system that communicate to you as a human being this is my master, this is my mistress, I am their slave. They become too powerful. And so we start to become um, immersed in their fantasy version of themselves in which they are, in their grandiose fantasy, they're all powerful. You're not stupid, you're not psychotic, you know very well as a conscious adult that they're not all powerful and they're not omnipotent, but don't get too cocky because though you can know something intellectually, your body might not understand it. Though you can know something at the level of knowledge, your heart, your emotions may not have integrated it as a truth yet. And what's happening? Well, you have this timeline, cut or wound, trauma, an incident, a scenario this is why when you come to therapy or you speak to your friends you're desperately trying to remember the dates and what happened on august the 4th at 1504 he said to me blah blah blah, blah but actually what happened was blah 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 because you're you're now fighting for your sense of reality uh, people often say that you're fighting for your sense of self yes yes you are but it's more dangerous than that if you lose your grip on reality we have a word for that, the ancient and probably less politically correct trauma-informed magic words term is insane. When you are sane, you have a good grasp of reality. When you are sane, you're in your adult, you see another adult who is damaged, and you say, okay, I see that this is a problem, I, I'm not here to fix that problem, I can walk away from this. But you were not able to, were you? And you're not in your adult, you're put into traumatized child mode again and again and again, which puts them in parent mode. Then, if that were not enough, the script will be flipped on you and they will present to you at other times in the timeline of the wounds, of the stimulus response. They show up, an incident occurs, a drama occurs, you become uh, hyper aroused, you become hyper vigilant, you get that big hit of cortisol and adrenaline, which across time is entraining the central nervous system. It's conditioning your biology to respond to one human being, one human being, as though they're incredibly important and incredibly significant, which is the narcissist's reality. It means, uh, to close the loop of what I said before, you are an adult, you are not insane, and you know very well that they're not omnipotent, but I said, don't get too cocky because along, along a long enough timeline, you move towards them actually becoming omnipotent in your life, not in their fantasy where they're omnipotent in the world, but they are becoming across the timeline of pain and incidents, 
incidents, they are becoming omnipotent in your life. And effectively, it becomes a kind of possession in the... And I mean this uh, when we were naming the course, I meant it in the woo-woo um, spiritual sense of being possessed as though by an evil spirit, which is a metaphor from an earlier time where they didn't have psychoanalytic theory and they didn't have psychology to come up with different metaphors. And it works, it's functional. But also in the Jungian sense, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I know I speak fast sometimes and my accent is a little bewildering for some people. Also in the Jungian sense, Jung, J-U-N-G, Carl Gustav Jung, psychoanalyst, in the Jungian sense. It helps if I don't use a Scouse action. In the Jungian sense, you become possessed. In the Jungian sense, you start to become possessed. By what? By your shadow? By their shadow? Do they shadow activate you? Do they immerse their disavowed self, their shadow into you? These are the things that we need to look at, but these are the things that we also need to take out, such that by the end of the course, you feel more sane. You feel more calm. You are no longer thirsting for the incidents because unfortunately, there are many unfortunate things inside of a narcissistically abusive relationship. Whatever you do a lot of as a human being, you can, you, we could say in a certain sense you will get addicted to. Because it's what you expect and because the human being is incredibly adaptable, that's our superpower. We don't have amazing strength for our size, we don't have big teeth and big claws uh, or, or the capacity to survive underwater for long periods of time. Um, we have the capacity to adapt, we're very adaptable. Very, very, very adaptable. Weirdly adapt, like spookily adaptable compared to um, other mammals. And we adapt to this. But in order to adapt to the painful scenarios that we've been through in childhood, we develop, as you all know, who's, who's stuck with me for 12 minutes and 12 seconds, you're, you're psychologically aware enough and educated enough to know that the things that you adapted to in childhood, um, in order to survive, so effectively that was adaptive, using psychology terminology and good well done becomes maladaptive when you're no longer in the traumatic environment and you're an adult trying to do adult things like form um, meaningful stable bonds with other human beings for example so what we've done as adults is we've adapted we've adapted to the nightmare to the horror show of the narcissistically abusive relationship in order to survive. We're not wrong, we're not stupid, we're not broken. You can say thank you, evolution, thank you, central nervous system, thank you for adapting to this scenario and protecting me. I honor and I thank you, but we need to stop, we need to stop. So the other part of this break narcissistic possession course is about finding a gentle, and organic and effective way to stop and to go from fantasy and drama and sweating and sadomasochism and roller coaster up down you did this to me and I'm gonna do this to you and this incident and that incident all of the unanswered questions all of the intrigue where were you what were you doing when you said this but you said this over here what all of this <laughs> high stress high anxiety stuff, clear it, you go back to reality. And that um, is actually quite tough. That's actually quite a challenge, is to go, okay, I don't want to live in that reality anymore. I don't want to live inside of a Mexican telenovela. Now I look this up because I like to be, I, I, the most important thing for me to be is factually correct. But I don't mind a little bit of political correctness. And I've been saying Mexican telenovela for years. Because when I think of like crazy short dramas where people are doing mad stuff, I think of Mexican telenovelas. But they weren't, telenovelas are actually originally do Brasil. Now we all know, we can thank the Brazilians. They started the real drama of the telenovela. But if you've ever watched it, they don't need to be Mexican or Brazilian. They have Indian ones, they have uh, Malaysian ones, they have uh, uh, Chinese ones, they're, they're all over the world. Like, it's kind of trash 
fiction, but what it requires is that people are fundamentally doing ta ta like really bad, awful people are doing bad stuff to each other all the time. That makes you go, oh my God, I can't believe you just did that. That's a disgrace, you're disgusting. Get home now and have a bath. There's a lot of that going on. And you can get addicted to that. You can get addicted. <laughs> or it's like high stimulation, high octane, high adrenaline drama. You have to consciously choose to come off it. It's a form, well, it's an addiction, but it's also a conditioned response. Addictions and conditions, uh, conditioned responses, which ones do you think are harder to break? If you listen to mass media, mainstream media, sorry, you'd think it was addictions. The research says no, it's actually conditioned responses. Conditioned responses can be more difficult to break. An addiction, if you yoink the person, if you yeet, as the kids say, if you yeet the person out of the context in which the addiction is taking place, provided there isn't like heavy biological withdrawals and there aren't many drugs that give you heavy biological withdrawals, again, uh, it's not in line with the, the mass, uh, mainstream media narrative. I know this because my first job was working for the probation service, um, dealing with uh, criminals in Runcorn. Um, who were drug addicts and there's and I had to obviously it was my job I had to do the research there's actually very very this this we have this myth of like uh, the physical the physical addiction oh if I come off cocaine I'm gonna be in a room for three days like in train spotting seeing visions and sweating and all that, but it's not like that so addiction actually isn't as difficult as conditioning for the human being to get rid of so why do we do a course like this that requires that you're listening to audios and doing exercises not once, not twice, but again and again and again? It's conditioning. It's conditioning. It's not entertaining. Now, if your brain is attuned to, I need variety, I need novelty, I need newness, it's very difficult to decondition you because it's hard in our culture. We don't respect conditioning. We don't value conditioning. We permit it to happen when it helps people to consume more items or to do as they're told at a political level, but we don't value conditioning generally. Not many cultures do anymore. But I can name one that does, because you all know where Kung Fu comes from. And everybody thinks Kung Fu means martial arts, but it doesn't. Wushu is arts, martial. Kung Fu means it's a little harder to translate. It's like the expression of skill after uh, a long period of time of hard work at that skill. So that's conditioning. So what is the conditioning, the conditioned response you get from the narcissistic abusive relationship? The end result of that conditioned response is this person's all powerful. I think that they probably control the media. I think they probably control the police and they can probably read my mind and they probably know I'm watching this video right now, which is way too much. Sure, they have power. Every human being has some potency in the world and it's to different degrees. All human beings have a different degree of actual power in the external world. What I'm saying is we overestimate it after a narcissistic abusive relationship. That's a bad kind of conditioning. We have to go through a good kind of conditioning where we say, look, I know that I've been involved in a relationship that I didn't really consent to, that I was coerced into. And I know I've been conditioned by a person who themselves is really traumatized, very mentally ill, and part of the expression of their trauma and their mental illness is to target people and exploit them for resources. Be it, we can say it's narcissistic supply, we can say it's attention, we can say it's for sex, it's for money, it's for this. They're exploiters, they're exploitative. That's a, a defining feature of uh, cluster B personality disorders, narcissism, narcissism and psychopathy in particular, but these are, uh, it's parasitic. They have a parasitic relationship with the host. They draw from them. What do they draw? I said it, narcissistic supply, attention, validation, um, uh, vanity, power, sex, money, what, well, you know, it's a, the, the mindset is fairly barbarous. It's a barbaric level of thinking. It's very, it's very undeveloped. It's very low. It's, in the, it's down in the, uh, in the lower chakras. It's stuck in the lower chakras, man. It's not raised to the crown chakra, man. It's down there. It's power. It's 
it's sex, it's access, it's bling, it's all of this stuff. So we then have to come out of that and say, okay, well, what were the benefits of that? What, what did I get from that? Did I get narcissistic supply from that? Did I start to become a little bit addicted to what they were feeding off, maybe? Maybe the vampire gave me a little bit of his or her blood so I could also enjoy the buzz of being a vampire. Maybe when I was in awe, and, and, forward slash awe, I was in the narcissistic fantasy land with them for so long, which is grandiose and delusional and kind of like has this film-like high octane quality to it that I kind of got used to that. And normal life kind of seems boring again. So, this I'll finish with this. We're entrained, we're conditioned, our sense of reality is now warped, our sense of how important they are is now too high, and our values have changed. Our values have changed. So this course, Break Narcissistic Possession, also has modules to get you back into the values of people who have a chance at leading a normal, sane life. People who value peace. People who value normality. People who value order and consistency and calm. Because if we're not that person and we don't learn to mature into that person, the narcissist that we're worried about today will get their hooks into us, their claws into us again in the future and or we'll find somebody just like them two weeks, two months or two years down the line and we don't want that. The Break Narcissistic Possession course is out now. As of Wednesday the 25th, we're gonna be uh, helping people through every single module of the course, so you're not on your own. It's not so, I mean, narcissistic abuse is quite isolating. Um, it's nice, sometimes it's nice to hang out in a community, you learn other people, you don't, please don't share your full legal names, don't post pictures of your own face. Um, use like an image of your cat or dog or a flower or something, use a fake name, maybe uh, your favorite hero or heroine from literature. Um, but you get to know each other a little bit. You get to even behind the, like the, the fake avatar, you'll know people at levels of intimacy that their best friends won't know them. Inside of 30 days, this is what happens. Uh, yeah, people who've done this before can attest to it in the comments. These bonds mean something. And it's pleasant if you want it. If you're not interested in that, then don't do it. Don't, uh, don't, don't partake of that part of the course if you don't like it. It's not for everybody. It's not an exam, this isn't school, I'm not a teacher, you're an adult, um, I'm an adult, I created this to help people. If you like it, try it. Um, we have a, a full refund guarantee on, on all the products. It's a no questions asked refund. You don't have to say, oh, I didn't like it because blah, blah. You just say, oh, I just want a refund. And we just refund you. The other thing I'm prepared to do on this course, as I was with the Unplug from the Matrix course, is if you have a therapist and you feel like you would like them to take a look at the material and maybe you can chat about, you can't chat about the whole thing because you're just gonna overwhelm the therapist and they want to do their therapy with you. You have to respect your therapist boundaries as well. But if there's like one or two exercises you wanna share with them, get them to email us uh, to say who you are in the course and we'll add them to the course for free so they can check out what you're doing. Listen. Folks, I'm in therapy right now. Um, it's really good. I'm in transactional analysis style therapy. It's helping me massively. There is no course or book or seminar that's going to trump um, therapy. Courses are always kind of cookie cutter. If you listen to what I said in the beginning, I'd um, I'd taken like a group of questions from a group of people and was like, what's the highest order, most desperate question I'm getting at the moment that I can help people with? And that it was done, uh, it's group sourced. It's done like almost via statistics, if you like. When you have a therapist who you have a good therapeutic relationship with, they know you, they understand you, um, if they're good, if they're good, if you have a good relationship, they will be able to guide you to places that you you will not get to on your own. Um, I'm good at this, but I'm me, and the human brain is evolved most likely to map 
terrain externally and to learn language and to hunt and to sense danger, but, but it's all out there. So we're pretty good at mapping external terrain, which means that if I'm your psychologist, I can look at you as though you're external terrain and I can map you really well if I'm good. I can't map me very well. I can't, My, our brains are not evolved for that. You probably can't map you very well. Your brain isn't evolved for that. So there's nothing wrong with getting therapy. There's nothing wrong with having the, the humility to say, I, I need to talk to somebody about this stuff because I have blind spots. The stuff I just can't see. So I just wanna say to you like, with any book I make or a course I do, either do it and see a therapist or see a therapist first and then decide if you need to do a book or a course please don't of use my stuff to avoid going to therapy because you're scared or or whatever okay i'm just trying to be a good um assistant i was going to say a good friend but that's not the nature of the relationship a good assistance in your process. I have the job to do, which is to try and help people to heal and go on with their lives. I have to tell you that, like, you, you, you should see a therapist. You should take the time. Look, let's do this real quick. Whatever country you're in, the internet is a good thing. And most countries around the world, they have a counseling directory or a psychotherapy directory. And if you go to that counseling or psychotherapy directory, you can then select if there's a particular style of therapy you want to go to, you can go for that. If you want them to specialize in CPTSD, narcissistic abuse, whatever, you can choose that. If you want to see them face to face, you want to know if you're in town, in, in the same town, you can select that. If you only want to chat to them via Zoom, you can select that. You can take the top five that you like the look of, and most therapists will let you interview them for 10 minutes. You just send them an email and say, hey, I'm going to go to therapy. I just want to have a chat with you to see if we gel. See if, we, see if we have rapport, most of them will say yes. This is how I chose my last therapist. So you take your top five that you like the look of, you interview all five of them, and then you go with the one that, when you spoke to them, you felt like you could have the most rapport with. I think that's it. Ladies and gents, uh, thank you for your time and for your attention. If you've already gotten the Break Narcissistic Abuse course, Drop a comment below and let me know what you thought of it. Somebody asked me the other day for testimonials on the Unplug from the Matrix course. I've never asked people for testimonials. I don't know how to do it. Um, but if you have feedback, either email me, uh, helpdesk at spartanlifecoach.info. It's on the contact form on richardgrannon.com or drop a comment. That really is it. Thank you very much. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Cheers. <laughs>